one of the uh, really very important part of the MPH program is the field practice component. Um, and this is because uh, the need to make students really aware of community needs and that they are working to impact the needs of society and improve it. So the school established 25 field sites with help from uh, uh, um, stakeholders. Um, Danida, I believe, uh, contributed some funds. Um, so what uh, they would do is that uh, establish um, uh, sites in uh, districts or uh, regions where the, uh, yeah, you, you had the full component of the district health management team. And the district health management team is the uh, uh, unit that li literally takes care of any district. It's headed by a physician with an MPH, disease control officer, information officer, uh, the uh, community health nurse, um, you know, and the uh, pharmacist. You know. So these then form uh, the uh, DHMT who uh, uh, look at the uh, health needs, uh, vaccination needs, uh, uh, disease, uh, you know, uh, uh, prevention needs, you know. So each uh, district which has uh, a DHMT uh, will have a site, you know, and so these 25 sites were scattered around the country. And students, after their two semester didactic uh, courses, would then be placed two per site. They will go to the community to uh, be part of the DHMT because that student may well become the next district director. So they would go in each uh, uh, district, would have a litany of uh, problems or researchable uh, uh, issues that they would want to solve. And so the students will look through the list and identify those that within their specialty, you know, it could be uh, an up, uh, you know, uh, that there's a recognition of uh, high infant mortality in this place due to one thing or the other high uh, maternal mortality, uh, teenage pregnancy, or, uh, you know, a, a sighting of some uh, new, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, observation of uh, people, you know, uh, growing, you know, huge, you know, expanded limbs uh, due to some infection. But th there is an observation of, of uh, some strange uh, diseases. And so if they that way inclined epidemiologists or biologists, they would want to follow that up. So you will go to the district, identify uh, your, uh, the, the gap of interest, and then you come and develop the proposal in the school. So in the school, you have um, a supervisor. One of the faculty will be your supervisor. And then the district director will be your field supervisor. You know, and and uh, you come back, develop your proposals, and then we used to, every year, invite all the stake, all the district directors, regional directors, and the stakeholders, WHO, UNICEF, to come together. Because this, we you know, we're looking at health in compre comprehensive uh, uh, needs of health. And these people we are, are, are funders, uh, you know, and uh, UNFP will have a, a series of uh, projects and they will provide funds so that students who are interested in the UNFP uh, projects will apply and will be funded, and their, their uh, research uh, results will go back to UNFP. So, in, in, uh, you know, so the idea of picking up a research of interest in the communities is that you address the needs, and then solve the problem, and then take the results back. So you you give a seminar after you finish about your findings, and leave the report. You know, and if you if you don't finish, another student can go and take up and finish it. So really. You know, our uh, uh, MPH was to impact, impact directly on the communities, trying to solve community issues as we went along. But that, 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 that was, is, is often getting, because these students will take a year off and come and finish it, and uh, will leave the thesis, you know, so getting them to publish was the next challenge. But I, I, I think, you know, um, as, you know, you, you urge them and they become more academically inclined, you get them into an MPhil and a PhD, then the publications, you know, uh, the need, uh, you know, to, to publish. But throughout all of this, we recognize the need to grow the program and build academia research. So we needed partnerships. And we had one of the most important, the initial partnership with our, we had was with the London School, um, with uh, Brian Greenwood, who had uh, Gates funding, 
and, uh, and the project, in fact, uh, so the Gates funding was for four countries. That was Ghana, Malawi, Tanzania, and Gambia. Um, so that got us that first uh, building, uh, part the Ghana Malaria, what used to be the Ghana Malaria Center. And it allowed each country to develop its own program. And we've, uh, what Ghana felt was that there was a lack of uh, 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 the uh, caregivers uh, recognition of what malaria, you know, uh, malaria was due to, how to assess uh, health when the child was sick, and where to go to, and what to do in terms of treatment. So we, uh, uh, the, the program in the uh, running at the Ghana Malaria uh, Center was uh, advocacy, um, you know, to uh, uh, mothers and. Uh, health give us about how to, uh, what malaria is about, uh, how to manage it when they have it, um, and then uh, home treatment, and then how to prevent it. So that, that was the basis for the program uh, that we had. And that ran for five years. And while that was running, we also got another huge uh, uh, funding partnership with Johns Hopkins, um, Professor Emitoy and uh, Benny Gaia. Uh, two fantastic uh, people, and that was for capacity building. So th their area of interest was reproductive health, um, family and reproductive health. I mean, family planning. That if you plan a family well, it will be a healthy, a healthier family, and uh, you have less uh, deaths in the mother, less in the children. But uh, they got huge funding again from Gates, um, and. This was to encourage uh, sites, uh, uh, in, uh, academic sites in universities to set up programs because they recognized that uh, Hopkins was particularly guilty of bringing in some of the very best and keeping them. So uh, the, the, the new drive was for them to contribute in capacity building in those countries, but they partnering with them in a sandwich program. So they will uh, you know, provide uh, help. Uh, uh, students will be registered in their own country. But the partnership is such that the student can come and have mentors, have access to uh, you know, all the resources at uh, Hopkins. And not only students, but the partnership was to enhance the academia and research of the senior faculty, junior faculty. We had funds to set up uh, research funds for uh, the uh, graduate student to compete for small uh, grants to develop their uh, PhD programs. They helped us in develop, uh, you know, uh, various curriculum, and they would have. They had uh, a program um, uh, uh, adolescent health, very, very uh, wonderful program they run up there. Um, so we had uh, faculty go there and co-teach with them and bring it over. Often uh, they will set up uh, a, a workshop period and come and spend two weeks, you know, and 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 teach in the area of interest. Um, I mean, this was the most wonderful partnership that anyone you know could have wished for. And in trying to help us establish, so the mandate was to go to each of these uh, academic uh, establishment and develop uh, a department of population family and reproductive health. In doing that for the school, we were able to bring all the other units of the school to six departments. So five other departments were, was developed along with the one that we had funding to develop. And with that, we were able to then submit a program to be reviewed by the academic board to be made faculty. You know, so, uh, you, know, so you start you know, uh, as a school of units and then you become a faculty, and then for the first time you can then have a dean, you know. So then I became the first dean in 2006 when the school became a faculty, you know. And, and then we've been growing. And with that, they also gave us funding for, uh, helped us assess funding for the building. So really that concretized the structure of the School of Public Health. Because having had the small site uh, put there with the uh, uh, initial funding from London School, were able to get uh, more funding to put up a, a bigger, I don't know if you've been uh, to the School of Public Health, but we've now got a, huge, a really quadrant 
um, of, of uh, you know, uh, and, and that is, I mean, the infrastructure is, is very important because they started at uh, calling it School of Public Health without walls. And uh, if you don't have walls, you can't really become established and expand, you know. So now we've started getting walls and, uh, and it's made, we still need more walls. But uh, that was part of, you know, so the initial partnership with uh, a, a partner uh, funding from the London School uh, with uh, uh, Brian Greenwood, and then uh, this enormous uh, five-year partnership with Johns uh, Hopkins. Um, and that allowed us to also leverage a number of funds from other institutions. Um, University of Ghana recognized uh, the uh, paucity of uh, research funds for faculty because not only didn't we have enough faculty for the rest of the university and the departments, uh, but they were so overburdened with teaching that they couldn't even access and if, even if they wrote grants, they didn't have the time to compete well for international grants. So the university went out and got grants from the World Bank and set up, set up what they call the uh, TALIF, Teaching, Learning and Innovation Grants to allow faculty to sit down, write grants, to either develop uh, programs, there's a health component for if it has to do with HIV, distance learning component. So that allowed, you know, so it brought money in and challenged uh, the investing, you know, uh, 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 population to that, you know, because you, you need to uh, publish and you need to, uh, to develop, you know, so you have no excuse now. There's funding now through the World Bank, you know, so, and uh, with, with uh, you know, researchers and colleagues, we got four of these grants, you know, each about 100,000. Know, and, and we did, we looked at malaria and HIV. So not only were we driving the academia, uh, the curriculum, developing new programs, we were also moving uh, the research you know, agenda, uh, looking at, uh, you know, various uh, in areas of, of interest, you know. So um, we've come a long way. I think the school is now recognized in academic areas as uh, the place to come for, uh, MPH internationally recognized. And we've now gotten a lot of research partners. Um, apart from, you know, uh, uh, Hopkins, we have, uh, you know, uh, various uh, school partners uh, with uh, a number of um, this, uh, German, you know, uh, Bernard Nocht Institute, you know, our researchers have partners with them, and a whole host of, uh, you know, other institutions. Um, and, uh, and we run programs. In, in fact, the, uh, uh, another thing that uh, the university did was uh, deciding to go uh, collegiate, uh, because when a university expands um, and, and uh, it lacks capacity when you go colleges and you can even bring the like-minded uh, you know schools together and you can maximize your your the share of faculty so um, in fact when I came the school uh, they had uh, put all the health related schools together in the College of Health Sciences you know so so that really and uh, you know David was then the director of the uh, Noguchi and then you had uh, the uh, head of uh, uh, medical school, dental school, nursing, school of public health. So then you form, and, 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 you know, so that you can leverage and, and use, uh, you know, the faculty and maximize. Uh, you know, so building that, uh, you know, college uh, was also, you know, uh, uh, helped uh, to enhance the, the, the health needs, you know, of the country. So. I've been, you know, a part of a lot of development. And you see, the youth are there, but you need leadership. You need innovative leadership. Uh, and once, you know, you, you, you'd be surprised that when things are happening, you, you find the youth who are so anxious to, and, and there's uh, really some bright young, and mentoring is one thing that uh, we don't have enough of, and the youth, um, you have bright youths that are not, they don't have anyone to turn to, you know, so uh, it's been identified as an area where you set up partnership, you set up mentoring, um, you know, uh, and, and, and that goes a long way at, at helping uh, young faculty and building up uh, faculty, the mentorship. 
and the leadership skills, you know, how to write grant proposals, how to write papers, you know, how to even manage, uh, you know, uh, and these are all, you know, and, and we, 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 we were fortunate. We had people, I mean, as I said, my days at NIH, you know, for me remains the most, you know, the, the most wonderful thing that happened to me, working with people like Lou Miller, you know, Jay Bezovsky, um, and, and, and just the uh, and, uh, intellectual environment. You know, so this is what I felt my going to the school. I have tried to um, provide the infrastructural space, intellectual space and research space for young people to see that there's more to life in academia, you know, than, than just the drudgery of just teaching, you know, that being in academia is exciting, you know. <laughs> Kids uh, trying to make sure people take you serious. Um, so it's hard work and uh, being able to deliver. And I, I think being a woman also, it's, it's uh, one, one, you know, you, you have to work harder uh, than your male counterpart. Uh, you have to uh, uh, knock on more doors. Um, and you have to have the highest level of integrity. Um, and you have to force people to take you serious that uh, you mean, you know, if you want to, if you say you're going to get to some place, you're serious and you're going to get there. Yes, yes. And, and also make sure you, you have the intellectual capacity to, uh, you know, get to where you want to get. You know, you can't take shortcuts, you know, so that is what you have to build into the young people, that you need to, uh, you know, take your uh, work seriously be on top of it, be knowledgeable, um, and then if you don't know, you ask, you know. Um, you know, so it's, it's, it's just administratively um, making sure that you're taking serious and knowing what you want and just get going out there and, and uh, getting it. You know, you, 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 you just can't take anything for granted, um, you know, uh, that, uh, in fact, if you're not careful, they would, you, certain levels are almost out of your reach, if you, but, but you have to let people know that nothing is out of your reach, that, that um, you have the capacity uh, to meet whatever demands, uh, you know, uh, are, are put to you. So, um, and, and and you have to have friends, you, you have to have a bit of luck. And, uh, you know, friends, uh, uh, have good friends too. Um, and I was fortunate, uh, you have to develop a critical mass of friends that you can think through and, you know, have a, a social milieu also that, that can support um, so that it's not all work. And I have a, you know, a very, Lovely family, extended, extended family, you know, and 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 it's it's not easy, you know. Uh, you tell them that even as uh, young mothers, um, the difficulties, and and tell them how they can manage their lives so that they can fit into academia. But yes, uh, it's uh, especially uh, men, women, young uh, women faculty need a lot of mentor, and there are few of us uh, in the system to help them. Yes. Yes, yes. You spoke about yes, that before. Yes, 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 yes. And it's, it's not getting any easier. Um, often they, they've had to make a choice to, you know, step down and just do family first. And often those who insist on doing both often, f uh, you know, fall short at, 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 at some point, yes. Um, but uh, those who... who uh, get mentored well and get the right support, they make it, yes. No, but because it, it was a, a, needs, a, a needs gap that was identified by the health service, so public health. So they needed the uh, you know, manpower to go out there and, and keep people. So it, there, was, uh, there was interest in, uh, you know, so we run programs. In fact, a number of them would uh, 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 part-time teachers, uh, you know, a number of, uh, you know, uh, administ uh, administrators and program managers were part of, you know, either supervising students or helping uh, to teach, or uh, for uh, supervision of our students. 
you know, um, and often when they need, um, for example, there was time, one time when there was so much um, uh, road traffic accidents that we had to run uh, uh, one of our courses, uh, 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 you know, on, on road traffic accidents, and there was one on uh, disability, you know, so, and then when HIV was taking its real toll, we had to run, it was a requirement that it would become a core course for everyone to take a course in HIV. So they help direct even uh, the academic uh, needs for health. Um, and to the extent that now, uh, you know, uh, they, they recognize the need to upgrade the workforce, which the disease control officers, uh, health, uh, um, uh, uh, hygiene officers were all sort of diploma uh, diplomats, and they would go from one diploma to the other. So, in order to en enhance their um, academic credentials and, and future, you know, um, uh, a job, um, uh, you know, uh, an enhancement, they uh, I get that there was some funding, and this was um, uh, Prof. Binka. And um, uh, the, again, the uh, uh, Ghana Health Service got some funding mm -hmm. to bring in a certain level of senior um, disease control officers and these to end uh, into a, a Bachelor of Public Health program to upgrade them to get a degree, you know, so that uh, you know, to uh, give them, you know, a wider sense of uh, the, the future. I've, I've had such good people to work with. I mean. You know, I, I think that the best partners I've ever had, had in, are the Hopkins. And Emitsoi is just one of anyone who's worked with Emitsoi. Uh, you cannot help but succeed. And uh, Benny Gaia, he's just about worked in every part of, uh, he's a, um, a retired uh, professor of child health. In, uh, and, and we were introduced just to the best of everything. At, uh, and our program was supported by Bill Gates, and uh, Bill Gates' father's special uh, interest was in uh, reproductive health. So he really was, was the godfather of the program at Hopkins. Um, so anything that happened and he was there, we got invited to be part of it. You know, so we directly met the big man. <laughs> It was, it was, it was, um, and, and they, you know, and they made sure they were, you know, they would come here and uh, various programs. Uh, and we, we, it's the most respectful partnerships, I must say, where other partnerships would dictate and tell you, we work together so that the community will see the impact. Because the end uh, product is for the community to upgrade, you know, and so we have to go there and find out what their problems are and how whatever ideals we have, we can you know, uh, work it to, uh, to improve the community. And in fact, uh, uh, they, they were uh, subsidizing uh, the program. In, in fact, um, all the health officers who were, sp were sponsored by the ministry for the first uh, 10 years, it's now that, uh, you know, uh, it's now uh, fee paying, so most people, so it's now become like any other public health. Uh, but you can get a, a grant from, you know, Red Cross or, you know, so people can go and source for, uh, you know, uh, funding. But uh, it's now, uh, you know, fee paying, you know, and so there's uh, some income generation now. Yeah. You know, you know, so uh, at, on uh, being on, uh, oh, I, in, uh, you know, in Ghana at 60, we all uh, go mandatory retirement for everyone at 60. So, you know, uh, you're, 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 you're put uh, uh, out there. And uh, <laughs> uh, which in a way, uh, a number of people have been trying to change them because for any country which doesn't have capacity, and at 60, people have so much experience and expertise to show, and then you put them on, 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 on a Back, back, back banner, you know, like this, and and then for the few that you find useful, you you bring back. Uh, people have been driving to say that you know why don't you move this to about 65, um, you know, so that you you uh, you know benefit from capacity. Um, but you know, so uh, the post-retirement contract allows me to uh, so 
uh, impact on research in academia, but then also, you know, uh, a member of the Ghana Health Service Council. Uh, so uh, you help uh, impact policy, and also I made it to the Ghana Academy of Sciences. Um, you know, so we see the Academy of Sciences is seen to drive uh, the national needs for, uh, for uh, 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 research, for science and technology, actually. Um, so again, you join uh, this group of, you know, and, and uh, last year, uh, the German Academy uh, joined forces with our academy and said, um, there is an, a, a, a realization that the, the double, um, uh, double agony or, or uh, um, uh, oh, there's a word, uh, a new medical term, where there's an overlay of both uh, uh, communicable and non-communicable diseases, um, uh, you know, ongoing at the same time. And they weren't quite sure uh, where to put their money for uh, research, calls for research or making a difference. So uh, they met, they invited us, the German Academy, uh, they, we met once at Kumasi to, uh, you know, uh, mull over the idea of, of coming together and think through uh, where the needs uh, for research are in terms of infectious diseases and non-communicable diseases, you know, where the problems are, you know, for Ghana, where do they see, um, you know, the, the three big diseases are still there, but the, the, the neglected tropical diseases were also there, so identify that. But there's an overlay of the non-communicable disease, a lot of uh, chronic kidney diseases, diabetes, hypertension, and uh, cancer, breast cancer, prostate cancer. So having reviewed that, and then they brought in experts also from there, and we had a week of a wonderful interchange. We all gave presentations. I gave a presentation of malaria vaccine. Are we ever going to realize it? You know, <laughs> um, and experts from Ghana. You know, uh, the hypertension, also, and then the the, the partners in the uh, Germany. Uh, you know, also uh, give their perspective. And then together, they brought in the federal, uh, the scientific component of the federal German government to sit in and listening and sift all this. And it's evolved to a call for research, you know, uh, in the area. Uh, you know, so, you know, so that these are the things, you know, so I see myself uh, in research capacity building, making a, helping to make a difference there, leadership, um, and some someday helping to develop the model of National Institutes of Health in the country, where uh, government will see the need of funding research that will benefit the nation, like I enjoyed at NIH. So that, that is where I see myself. I thought, my goodness, did we talk about all that, you know, my first day in Ghana? Um, and I really, I, I, I must tell you, uh, Julie, I thought you were most discerning in, in asking all the right questions. I mean, you know, are you going to, do you think you can survive? Um, are you going to be able to get, you know, your dreams through? And uh, you wanted to know, because I, I was interested in setting up uh, immunological, you know, a, a clinical immunology. It hasn't happened, but we we've, we are building the capacity. Someday that will, um, you know, and 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 so all those. You know, so I went through that, and I thought this will even be my guide. To to make sure that all those dreams and 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 uh, you know and uh, I think I talked about the need for. Um, as we all ran away in '83 because the death of intellectual stimuli. You know, now that we, we're bring, bringing back friends and partners to help us develop, and I think that is happening. Go and build capacity in five villages. You know, taking this, uh, you know, uh, field, uh, you know, uh, longitudinal field studies, uh, and and it was because I couldn't start it in Ghana, and I I, I found partners uh, in Ruth and uh, uh, Diane that we we really started it in in uh, Cameroon, um, so. When I, I came back, uh, and there was a colleague of mine, Dr. Addison, we did the MPH uh, program at London School. 
And when he heard of uh, the work I was doing at Cameroon, he said, someday when you come back home, we have to establish the, these, uh, one of these longitudinal field sites to understand malaria in a village uh, that I have. I have a friend, a chief, uh, who would love to uh, help us do this research in the village. And this village is called pont on sea um, you know, and they didn't have any healthcare center. And Dr. Addison, who's you know my contemporary, I said we did the MPH together at London School in 1974, and we planned that somebody will work together in the villages. So he and is part of the Rotarian uh, Club, Tema, and they literally every uh, uh, month they would go and give free healthcare, and then they collected funds and started building a, a health center. And when it was almost ready, they invited the, go the government, took it over and finished it. And then it's now become, uh, you know, a, a part of the Ghana Health uh, Services Health Center to the extent that now it's become a, a, a district. But it used to be a small village with no healthcare center in. Uh, Dr. Addison and the Rotarians started building it. So when I came, Dr. Addison and I, I got a, a grant from uh, MIMCOM, uh, you know, uh, TDR MIM, uh, and uh, we got funding to establish the field site like I did in Cameroon, here in Pungon Si, literally look at malaria from birth to aging. The children and, uh, and, you know, we're doing everything. Uh, we're looking at the mosquitoes, what types of mosquitoes transmit malaria there, you know, uh, what are the genetics of the population, what type of parasites. And then the chief, you know, and, and it was a site for students to do their dissertation. You know, one would look at um, the environment, was the environment that will encourage uh, uh, breeding of mosquitoes. Some were looking at health-seeking behavior of the population, you know, what kinds of drugs. They... So the chief called Dr. Addison and said, I know you're interested in malaria, but the, my problem in this village is the teenage pregnancy. That these girls, I mean, don't even finish primary and they, you know, they, they're just pregnant all over the place. So how can you find me the, what the problem is and what we can do to make sure these young girls finish at least senior high school? So we set one of the MPH students, did a brilliant work. We've got to, she's now working with the um, Episcopalian, uh, monitoring and evaluation for Episcopalian uh, NGO somewhere. But this girl worked for three months in the village, identified that for the problems, because there was no electricity. There's no, 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 no support systems. You know, so in, in doing all this, they, we identified the problem and uh, the recommendations was for the Ghana Health Service, the Reproductive Health Session, to come and set, you know, a resource center in the village so that the teenagers can access, you know, uh, uh, some learning skills to be part of the school. You know, so, uh, so they found out, you know, they really didn't have anything to do, you know, by six o'clock, I mean, and, you know, the, the, it was, uh, uh, you know, for money, you know, the, these uh, kids who look for, uh, you know, sugar daddies and, uh, you know, so they identified, uh, you know, all the problems that you need to engage these people in useful enterprise. Um, and so uh, the recommendation was to bring the Ghana Health Service in, uh, put in the resources that will, uh, you know, help them encourage the young people to see that their future is better than just having children before, you know, even junior high. But, you know, but these are the kinds of uh, things that uh, we, we engage the community to, to the extent that, and periodically we have to uh, let them know what we're doing, and um, and we also brought in the head of um, the, the uh, one of the top physicians in um, uh, his, uh, his expertise in hypertension to look, uh, look at risk factors uh, in hypertension and diabetes. You know, so we screened the whole village, and people were running around with uh, di diabetics who didn't even know. A large percentage of villages were diabetics and hypertensive. These would just drop and they say probably some old lady in the house uh, was responsible for their death. And it was just because they, were, they didn't know they were hypertensive. Yes. So. <laughs> but you'll never forget that chief. Oh, I mean, he, he, he literally says that, you know, I know, you're, you know your, your, your work is in, in your malaria, but, you know, I want you to find out why, you know, the teenage pregnancy that the, the you know, it, it's, it's just getting out of proportion. So try and find out how we can, you know, stop. You know, so, so these are, for him, it's a major public health issue because the young ladies weren't going out, you know, 
you know, they're being sent to school, but they're not, you know, uh, 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 getting getting the benefits of their education.